Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we are going to complete the test setup for our Angular presentational component. We are going to talk about some of the typical pitfalls that you might find while setting up Angular component testing. Now that we have configured our test module, we can now go ahead and call compile components. So this is going to get us back a promise that is going to get resolved whenever the compilation process is finished. You might think that calling compile components ensures that all the components are immediately compiled synchronously, but that is actually not the case. The compilation of Angular components is an asynchronous process that in certain cases might even trigger external HTTP requests to fetch HTML templates, style sheets, etc. So the only safe way to execute some code after the compilation has finished is to use this then block and wait for the promise to resolve. Now inside this then block we are going to do the setup of our test. As usual we are going to be defining here a series of variables that we will use throughout the test. The first variable that we are going to define is going to be the component itself. Let's annotate this with the type course card list component. Just like before in the case of services, what we are trying to create here is a component instance that is unique to each test. So inside the before each block, we are going to be creating a brand new component that is going to be used by one specification and one specification only. In order to create an instance of a component, we are going to need a component fixture. So the component fixture is a test utility type that is going to help us to do some common test operations such as for example obtaining an instance of the component, debugging the component, etc. The component fixture type takes here a generic parameter type that is going to be the type of the component itself. So let's have here a quick look at the fixture testing utility API. So as you can see we have here access to an instance of the component itself. We have here access to debugging capabilities that we will be exploring further on in this course. We can even trigger manually change detection in the component in order to update the component with the latest data changes. We have access here to the native DOM element of the component if necessary. So as you can see the fixture type is really a utility type that helps us to bring together a lot of features that we will be needing for testing a component. We will be needing the fixture in the multiple tests that we are going to write, so let's start by saving the fixture here before each test. We can create a component fixture by using the test bed. We are going to call the API create component and we're going to pass in here the type of the component that we want to create, in this case the course card list component. We can now use the fixture to grab an instance of the component itself. So we can do that by calling fixture.component instance. And with this we have most of our test setup in place. Let's now write our first test. We are going to assert that our component instance has been correctly instantiated. So we can assert that here on this initial spec. We are going to write here that we expect that the component instance should be trophy. So we don't expect here an undefined or null value etc. We expect here that this variable is correctly initialized. And just so that we see that this indeed corresponds to an instance of the course card list component, we are going to print out this component to the console. So let's now quickly try this initial version of our test. If we switch here to the browser report, we are going to see that our test has failed. So we have here 10 specs that were executed, only one has failed and actually two of them are pending. So we have here the message expected and defined to be truthy, meaning that our component instance has not been correctly initialized. So the question now is, what is going on here? To understand this, let's go back here to our 
test implementation and have another look here at the before each block. So as you can see, this is a synchronous before each block, meaning that our promise here is going to get evaluated and these two variables are going to be filled in, but the test runner is not going to wait for this promise to get resolved before proceeding with the execution of the test specifications of the test suite. So what is happening here is that this block here that only gets executed whenever this promise gets evaluated is going to be executed after the execution of the test itself and not before like we intended when we put this code inside before each. So how can we solve this? Well, the simplest way of solving this problem is to use an Angular testing utility designed specifically to solve this called async. So this is not to be confused with the TypeScript async await keyword. So this is a testing utility function called async to which we are passing the body of our before each block. We can see here that async is getting imported here from angular slash core slash testing. So again, async in this case is not a language feature. This is simply a testing utility, a function that receives as input argument another function. So how does this async test utility work? Well, what async is going to do is to wait for any asynchronous operations triggered by the code that we passed to it to complete. So async is going to wait for a predefined amount of time. By default, that is a timeout of five seconds for any asynchronous operations launched by this test block to complete. This means that async is going to keep track of, for example, any promises or timeouts or other browser asynchronous operations triggered by this code block. The async utility is going to keep track of every single one of those operations and a sync is then going to wait by default for five seconds for all those operations to complete before considering that the before each step has been completed. So in the particular case of this code block, the only asynchronous operation that is getting triggered here is this promise. So a sync is going to detect that the promise was launched here and it's going to wait for the promise to complete. Now, because the compilation of our components takes a lot less than the default timeout of five seconds, that can be changed if necessary, then this means that our then block is going to now get executed before the before each step is considered completed and before any of the tests of the test suite get executed. So if we now run again this new version of our test, we are going to see here in our test report that now our should create the component test has been successfully executed. Now notice that there are other ways of setting up component tests. By default, the Angular CLI is going to suggest you to split this before each block into two different steps, one a synchronous block for configuring the testing module and one synchronous block for setting up here the test variables, I recommend that you use instead this consolidated form of a before each block. So there is only one asynchronous before each block and we initialize here our test variables in the then clause of the promise returned by compile components. So with this, let's remove here this logging statement and let's continue the implementation of our test suite. We are going to now learn how to debug this type of tests if necessary and we are going to learn how to interact with the DOM and assert that the data is being correctly represented on the screen.